Hey everyone, welcome back. For this session, we're gonna be looking at conditionals, which is kind of the start of our meat and potatoes of programming. So let's go ahead and jump into it. First, let's start with a review for last session. So here's some tasks. This section here is associated with lists, and this section here is associated with dictionaries. So go ahead and pause the video, make an attempt at it, and then we'll go through it together. Okay, so let me switch over to the editor. And I've already co uh, copy and pasted the code, or the, uh, the tasks into this editor and commented them out. So let's start off with the lists. So first, create a new empty list. So my list equals, and then square brackets to indicate that this is a list. So add two entries to the list. So my list dot append, and we'll just use my name, and we'll do that again, and we'll put Tom. Okay. So next is change the second entry. Okay, so to change an entry, we're gonna do my list, and it's index of one, right? So remember index is start at zero, so that means Will would be zero and Tom would be one. So my list of one equals, and we'll change Tom to Mike. Okay, so now we need to remove the second entry. So in order to remove, we can do my list dot pop, and because it is the last entry in the list, we can just use pop like this. We don't have to pass any indexes because that will automatically remove the last entry. Okay, so next is to create a new list and initialize it with three entries. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a new list now. So new list equals square brackets and then I'll put something in it. So I'm gonna use letters. So A, oops, A, comma B, comma, and C. Okay, so we've got our new list. And we need to modify the last entry in the new list. Okay, so new list index of two, which remember starts at zero, so zero, one, and two. So two equals, and we'll change that to D. Okay, and then access the first entry in the new list. And then we'll just print it. So print new list index of zero. And that would accomplish this portion of the tasks. One thing to note here is that I did use the pop function here. And in theory, I could have had something like n1 equals, right? Remember, pop gives back or returns the element that it removes. So just something to keep in mind. But I didn't need it, so I didn't include it. OK, so let's go ahead and get rid of this. And we'll move on to the dictionary section. All right, so create a new dictionary with initialized data, and then let's make a phone book. So we'll just say phone book equals will, and then the phone number will be 555. And let's put another one in there, so Mike. And his phone number will be 888. And we'll do one more, and we'll put Sarah, and hers will be 777. Okay, so we need to access an entry. So we'll say that uh, Sarah, for example, we'll make a variable for this, and we'll say equals phone book. And remember that phone, or at least not phone book, but dictionaries in general uh, work on keys. So I need to, if I want Sarah's number, I need to access it by the key of Sarah, which means that Sarah, this variable, will contain Sarah's phone number. Next is to modify a phone number. So I'll say phone book, and then let's just use my name. So Will is going to be updated to 111111. Okay, we need to remove an entry. So let's go ahead and use the, let's just use the DEL. So DEL, right, we're just going to straight up delete. We don't need to work with it afterwards. So DEL, then we're going to do phone book, and let's get rid of Mike. And then we need to add a new entry. So phone book, and we'll put Sam equals 222, 2222. And that takes care of all the tasks that were required for this activity. Great. So let's go on to this session's materials. So conditionals. So conditionals operate on the basis of true or false. 
And adding conditionals to our programs allows us to drive the program's flow into different branches of logic. So taking a look at this little flow uh, diagram here, we've got our program star, and there's some logic there in the middle. And eventually it's some kind of a conditional. If the conditional evaluates to a true, then it will go left down to some specific logic, and then the program will end. If the condi conditional evaluates to false, it will do the right side logic, it can, a different set of logic from the other one, and then the program will end. So that's the power of conditionals, it allows us to branch into different process flows in our program. So at the simplest level, you can use a print statement to uh, print the result of a conditional. And the simplest one is going to be print 1 equals equals 1. And that's going to output true, because 1 is indeed equal to 1. So notice here that we have two equal signs. This is saying, is the thing on the left equal to the thing on the right side? And then, like I said, since 1 is equal to 1, it outputs true. This equals equals is known as an operator. So here are some of your conditional operators uh, in Python. Or sorry, comparison operators. So you've got your equals equals, and that's checking for equality. You've got your exclamation point equals, and that's going to be your not equal. You've got greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. So kind of similar to what you've seen in a math class. So on the right side here, we've got a code snippet. So x equals 5, y equals 7, and then we have a bunch of print statements doing all of these comparison operators. So for that first print, x equals equals y. So is x equal to y, true or false? And the answer is false, because 5 is not equal to 7. Next line is x not equal to y. And that outputs true, because 5 is indeed not equal to y. Then we have x greater than y. That's going to output false, because x is less than y. Next line is, is x less than y? And that's going to output true. And then we have greater than or equal to and less than or equal to, which will put out false and true, respectively. Now, we can also use the keywords and, as well as or, to combine conditions to make more complicated pieces of logic. So when you use the and keyword, you're saying that both conditions must equate to true in order to return true. If you use the or condition, or I'm sorry, or keyword, then either condition can be true, and it will return true. So taking a look at this code snippet here, we have a equals 3, b equals 7. So print a less than 10 and b less than 10. And this is going to output true, because both a and b are indeed less than 10. Next, we have print a less than 5 or b less than 5. And this is going to print true, because a is indeed less than 5. So because that one condition is true, and we use the OR keyword, that's all that matters, and it will print true. And lastly, we have print A less than 5 and B less than 5. And this is going to output false, because despite the fact that A is less than 5, B is not, and we use the AND keyword. So both conditions have to evaluate to true in order to produce true. So. Now let's take a look at kind of some basic flow with Python. So Python keywords to know are the if, elif, and else keywords. The basic format for an if, elif, and else chain are below. So notice here that there is specific indentation. Uh, for the if statement, the elif, and the else, it is four spaces in. And this is kind of just the standard Python convention. So we have first our if, and then a condition, and a colon. So when you have a colon in Python, that means that the next line is going to be indented to indicate that this piece of code belongs in scope of this colon. So if we're looking at this if statement here, if this condition is met, then that means that the first statement and that second statement will be done. The elif and else won't even be checked. And then it moves on to that last statement, which is that not in the conditional logic comment. If the first if statement is not met, so that condition is not met here first, it will then go to the elif, and it will check that condition. If that condition is met, it will do the two statements underneath it, and then it will skip over the else and do the statement that's not in the conditional logic. If the if condition is not met and the elif condition is not met, then the else is the default. 
and it will do those two statements underneath the else, and then it will do the last statement there. So conditionals do not necessarily have to be the entirety of the if, elif, and else chain. So it can simply be just an if. So in this example here, we have if condition, do a statement, and then a statement that follows that's not in the conditional logic. It can also just be if and else, right? And you use that in a scenario of a binary choice. It has to be one or the other. So if condition, do this statement, else or otherwise, do this statement. And then the statement at the bottom, which is not in the conditional logic. So given this information, let's go ahead and do a review activity. So first, I want you to imagine that you operate a movie theater and you have three ticket prices and their associated age ranges. So an adult is 18 to 64 and they are going to be $15. A child is zero to 17 and they are going to be $8. A senior is going to be 65 and plus and that's going to be $10. So you want to, you want to ask the user for their age and output the appropriate ticket price. So let's go ahead and switch over to the editor and do this activity. So I'm going to copy this out. Paste it in. And comment it. OK, at this point, feel free to pause the video and attempt it yourself and then come back and I will do this and we can do this together. So hopefully you made an attempt at doing this. So let's go ahead and walk through it together now. So <clears throat> we have three ticket prices here and we need to ask for the age. So I would say we wanna ask for the age first. So age equals input, enter the age. And now given that we have to look for ranges, right? We have to use conditionals based on numbers. We wanna convert this to a number now. So age equals age, sorry, int age, right? Because it's reasonable to assume the user's gonna enter a whole number. So just something to show you here. You don't have to do this in two lines. You can actually do this in one line. Let me show you what that looks like. So you put the input inside of the int function. So how this is going to run is the input will run first. So the innermost function is going to run first. The user will enter an age. And then the age is going to be given as a string, right? So let's just say 25. Then that's going to be passed immediately to the int function, which is the surrounding function. And then the age variable is going to be set to whatever is returned back from the int function, which would be the number 25. So this is how you do it in one line. So I'll just leave it like that for now. OK, so now we've got our input taken care of. So now we need to do our conditionals. So I'm gonna start with the children first. So if age is less than 18, right? Because children are from zero to 17, not including 18, right? So this is a less than, which means it does not include 18. Print, and I'll use the F format for the print here. So print, your price is, Actually, I don't even need the F format because there's no variables to use for the prices. So your price is $8. Okay, next we can do the adults. So L if age is greater than or equal to 18 and age is less than 65. So in this case, it's at, it's greater than or equal to the age of 18 and less than 65, meaning that 65 itself is not included. So print your price is $15. And lastly, if it's not a child or an adult, right, then it's going to be a senior. Right, and this is the default case. It didn't meet either of the other two. OK, let's see how this works. So I'm going to enter 7. 
right? So I, I should get a child price. Perfect. Okay, let's do another test. And we'll do 30. Perfect. And let's do a senior, so 65. Great. So it looks like everything's working. Now, when you did your uh, this task by yourself, you may or may not have come up with the exact same logic, and that's okay. Depending on how you wrote your program, you could have the age of less than 65 here, I'm sorry, greater than 65 here, else adult. Um, there's a couple of ways to have written this program. I have some sample solutions in the PowerPoint, um, so feel free to take a look at those as well. So here's one of the sample solutions, here's the other one, and it's very similar, um, with the difference being that conditional in the middle. But feel free to look at it. Okay, so another review activity. So write the code to complete the following task. So imagine you're writing a software to calculate letter grades. Ask the user to enter the numeric score and then output the letter grade. Assume the input is going to be an integer and assume the ranges are as follows. So an A is 90 to 100, a B is 80 to 89, a C is 70 to 79, a D is 60 to 69, and an F is 0 to 59. So I'm going to go ahead, copy this out. I'm going to remove all this, paste it in, and I'm going to comment it. Okay, so feel free to pause the video and take a stab at this. Okay, so hopefully you made an attempt at doing it, so let's go ahead and do it together now. So we are writing software to calculate a letter grade. So these are our ranges, 90 to 100, et cetera, et cetera. So first thing we need to do is, to, is ask the user, what is the actual grade? So we're gonna use that same formula from earlier. So score, equals int input, right? So I'm putting it in one line, enter score. Okay, so once you've got that, right, now we can start doing comparisons to the letter grades. And again, this is one of those scenarios where you could write this in a couple of different ways. Uh, I'm gonna actually go from the bottom up, meaning I'm gonna start from the letter F and make my way up to the letter A. So if score less than 60, Right, so everything from zero all the way up to, but not including 60, right? So zero to 59, that is an F. Okay, so LF. So the score is above 60, but it's less than 70. Then it's going to be a D, right? So if I had entered a 65, right, it's greater than this, therefore not met, but it's less than 70, therefore that is a D. And you kind of see the pattern here. It's less than 80. Print a C. LF score less than 90. Print a B. And then the default, right? Didn't meet any of those. Print an A. Okay, let's see how we did. Go ahead and run it. So score, we're gonna start off with an F. I got a 55. Okay. Now you got to test for a D, so let's put a 67. Okay. 75. All right. 85. Looks good. 95. Okay. Looks like everything is running okay. Great. So I do have a couple of sample solutions here. So this one kind of maps the one we just did, and this is one if you wanted to go from top down. So feel free to take a look. So before we go from this session, um, one thing I did not cover was the not keyword. And I find that this tends to be kind of confusing. Um, so basically what the not keyword does is it gives you back the inverse result. So let's take a look at this sample here. So we have x equals five and y equal to seven. If not x greater than y, print x is less than y, else print x is greater than y. So given that five, right, which is x, is less than seven, right, x is greater than y, produces a false, and then we use the not keyword to inverse it to true. And therefore, line five will run, and it will print x is less than y. 
So again, I find that this is sometimes confusing. This is not logic. Um, but I wanted to mention it just for kind of completeness. So that does it for conditionals. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture. And I'll see you next time.